it has become um, you know more popular more common that knowledge I guess um, that there are treatments available these days to if you like cure someone of atrial fibrillation but I don't know that I'd call it a cure um, I think the uh, those treatment options are really for people who experience significant uh, symptoms of of their atrial fibrillation so in particular the heart rate and the irregular rhythm it is enough to make them uh, either short of breath they might get ch chest pain uh, they might collapse they might faint you know they might be unable to do their normal daily activities so if, uh, for people who are symptomatic uh, you know but like that it may well be that they are candidates um, uh, for treatment to um, to revert them into a normal rhythm the problem with those treatments is that they don't work for everybody um, and people are very likely to slip you know um, to um, slip back into atrial fibrillation and indeed some of the treatments uh, although they might make someone feel better um, they're still at risk of developing a clot and so they although they might not need the treatment anymore to slow the heart rate down they actually need to remain on the treatment to prevent the blood clots from, you know, up from forming in the heart so these new treatments um, or to revert someone that back into a normal LUT rhythm are really only suitable these days for some specific groups of patients who've got specific types of atrial fibrillation and that's you know that that's why it's always worth I guess checking uh, you know with your doctor uh, about how things are going uh, telling them about any new symptoms that you're getting to make sure that you're not you know moving into one of the groups who would benefit from having a different form of treatment.